Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and we are uh, in January 3rd. And it looks like it's going to actually snow later in the day. But we're taking both the eggs and the lettuce to Johnson's because they have the best price on both of those commodities. So let's get these sold, make a little more money, and then we're done with January. Then we're going to sleep till February and sell our honey. That is the plan. For the moment, anyway. Fourteen hundred and eighty-six dollars is, or no, fourteen thousand. Sorry, and eighty-six dollars. Uh, November's the best time for eggs. Ooh, this is kind of a crappy time to be selling eggs, but it doesn't matter. We sell them every month, anyways. Regardless, what about lettuce? This is the best time to sell lettuce. Okay, nice. Oh yeah, fourteen thousand dollars and change uh, from that sale. That isn't bad. That brings us up to 122000 There is nothing in the sales, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, is worth uh, anything we're interested in. There's like a combine we can't afford and a forage harvester, which we can't afford or something like that. Anyways, there's nothing in there that we can, that we, uh, can afford or want to buy. So, all right, I'm going to head back to the house, sleep until February 1st. We'll get our honey loaded up, and then we'll go sell that. So I'll see you um, in February. All right, guys, it is February, and it is snowing, and we have frost on the ground, and it's a bit chilly outside. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Frog in my throat. I just swallowed some coffee right before I started the recording. And... Maybe a little bit went down the wrong tube. Okay, so we got another full pallet of honey there. Uh, to, so today, in-game day, is sell honey day and then refill greenhouses with water day. Um, and look what else came up in the sale. The Lizard Trailer, the MKS-32, is once again up for sale, $24,000. And it's just an amazing trailer. I'm, I'm tempted. I have to tell you, I am tempted to get this trailer, but we don't really need it. Okay, it's not hard for me to manage this trailer so that I, you know, manage the fertilizer and the water uh, at the same time. If I had nothing else to spend money on, I would get another one of those, but I don't think we will. As much as I would like to do that, I, I, I think we need to be frugal, be smart with our money. Um, because... What I don't want to have to do, I will do this if I have to, and I've already mentioned this to you guys, but what I don't want to have to do, if we can avoid it, is, excuse me, i got to back up just a little bit here, is I don't want to have to take out another loan. Um, is my steering wheel screwed up? Feels like it's, okay, hold on a second. Yeah, hold on. I need to somehow or another must have bumped the button on my wheel here. Okay. That's what I want. It was just really sloppy. Okay, so yeah, let's get our honey loaded up. And I'm hoping we make at least 20 Twenty thousand on this honey because that's what it costs to buy this thing. And then after that, you know, we've recouped our money, and then this is basically free money. And if we ever do um, plant, well, I was gonna say if we ever do plant a flowering crop, but that actually isn't gonna apply to this beehive because I don't plan on ever moving it again. It's too much of a pain in the butt to move it. Um, all right, you know what? Since we're selling everything, we might as well grab that one, too. And we can actually widen our forks out just a little bit, too. Yeah, I'd I'd like to buy that... that um, tank trailer, but we just don't need to. And I want to, I want to, ideally, okay, we'll be able to pay cash for 
anything now on, from now on. That includes field purchases and equipment purchases. But what would change that is if something critical or essential, maybe is a better word to say, to our operation, um, particularly things having to do with hay, because we're mostly in the hay business, come available on sale and even if that means we have to take out a temporary loan to get it, we will do that. But hopefully things will work out to where we won't have to do that. Okay. Come back just a little bit. Right there's good. I don't know if I'm gonna need to go too wide or not on this, so we'll just go one wide, and then if we have to, we we, all, we can always put a few on the pickup too if we have to. Okay, so let's open you up. Yeah, we actually don't have that many pallets here, which is kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is. Oh, that pallet's in the other direction. Okay. Must have grabbed it from the end. Okay, guys, well, um, let me get the rest of these loaded up, and then uh, we will go sell it and see how much money we make. So, see you in a bit. So, OG just reminded me that it is February, it is snowing outside, it is a bit cold, and he was wondering if it wouldn't be too much trouble for me to, you know, give him something a little warmer to wear other than just this t-shirt, so... Yeah, we need, to, <laughs> we need to we need to give our guy here uh, something a little warmer. So, how about that? Um, that looks pretty to uh, pretty cozy right there. Except for we might want to also uh, give him a toque. So let's give him a toque. And um, how about we make it a dark blue toque? And we should probably give him some gloves, too, for the cold weather. So, uh, kind of, none of these really look like, yeah, these look pretty warm. Okay, so we'll give him those gloves. I'm sure he appreciates being dressed up a little, a little warmer than that. Are there any pants that are warmer than jeans? Um... None of these really look particularly warmer than jeans. Those kind of look like snow pants a little bit. Yeah, he's okay in jeans. He's got tough legs. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's just make sure we're looking wintry here. Okay. Yeah, I really wish that uh, they had like a emote so I could like wave at you guys and stuff when we're in third person. But yeah, he looks pretty good there. Okay. Uh, now he's nice and toasty. Okay, let's get this honey salt. See how much money we can make. We're, we're hoping for 20 grand. That's what we're hoping for. Close the door there. Wait a minute. I did get everything out of here, right? Yep. Okay. It's kind of nice that we have that cellar to use. Good. Yeah, everything's strapped here. This isn't the neatest job of uh, loading, but hey, we got the job done. We are selling in a winter wonderland. 
Well, except for I'm binding up my trailer there. Let's see who's got the right, the right price. The price is right. So we are selling honey. Cereal factory is 10.69. Mama Joe, Mama Joe has the best price. What do you know? She added uh, some new honey cakes uh, to the breakfast menu in the in the restaurant there, so that's why she needs all this honey. Okay, let's sell it. And see what happens. We got 432. And three thousand, really thirty nine twenty. That's it. <laughs> so we made we made a little over four thousand dollars on that honey. Okay, so that means that it's going to. I, I don't remember exactly when we purchased that, but that means it's going to take five years ish to recoup. Just recoup our investment on that one thing. That is not worth it, you guys. That is completely not worth it. Um, yeah, I think we should sell and be done with it. Totally not worth it. I would have been okay if we would have made, say, like 10 grand and recouped our, you know, our cost over two years. But five years-ish? It wouldn't be quite five years, but no, it is not worth it. The bees have to go. They helped us, you know, they increased the yield by some percentage. I have no idea really of knowing when we had the canola crop, but otherwise, you know, you would do something like this if if you have a production chain where honey was part of it, like, you know, the cereal plant, that kind of thing. But just having one thing of honey here um, is not worth it. I just don't see it. Okay, so... What we're going to do then is go into the, no, not there. This menu, we're going to select this and sell it and get 9,000 bucks. And we'll also sell the pallet location. And we might as well put a little patch of grass back there so we can, you know, because I always hit this, this grass when I'm mowing. We're going to landscaping, plants, grass. Um, and let's increase this a little bit. Let's put a little bit of frosty grass right there. And we are not, no longer in the bee business, you guys. That's disappointing, but again, time is money, you know. And that is not very much money. Mama Joe will have to find somebody else to supply her honey. Okay, well, now we know. Um, if we ever do, like I said, decide later on down the road to, to do a cereal production chain, then, of course, we will need more honey at that time. But that, if that happens at all, it certainly is going to happen anytime soon. Um, so there you go. Okay, the only other thing we need to do here in February is we need to fill up our greenhouses with water the fertilizer is still going to be good for you know a couple couple three more months anyway so let's get that done next All right, guys, that takes care of the watering and takes care of February. So we're going to sleep till March. And then we should have some contracts come up, probably fertilizing and maybe cultivating. Uh, the first hay cutting for the, the computer farmers doesn't happen until April 1st. and But we will have our own hay harvesting uh, that we can do. So, yeah. 
Turn all, whoops. Turn all those lights off, and I'll see you guys in the spring. All right, guys, we're back. It's actually February 3rd. I forgot to... Uh, that we needed to do our produce at the end of February, so it's not quite uh, springtime yet. And Johnson's is once again the best place to sell both eggs and lettuce. So let's make a little more money here. $12,361 Mickey Hala. All right. Uh, there's nothing in the sales that we're interested in. There's a forage mixer wagon and a, a cultivator here. Uh, we are going to need this at some day, you know, someday uh, when we have cattle, because this is what you use to mix, uh, to make total mixed ration. But again, that time is a little ways out in the future. So now I will see you guys in March. All right, guys, welcome to March 1st. And uh, in this uh, month, we are going to harvest our own hay. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, harvesting our own hay, too, in just a moment. Um, but let's take a look at the sales. Nothing really in here. Uh, we got a header, which we don't need. And we have a, a Zetter tractor, which we also don't need. Okay, so let's take a look at contracts. I'm expecting fertilizing contracts, yep. So we'll take all of these as usual. Not going to do weeding. Uh, so we'll take every fertilizing contract that pops up. That's really good money. Okay, so it looks like that's it for fertilizing contracts. Okay, cool. So we'll get those knocked out. Uh, and uh, so let's talk about the hay. So I watched a video on harvesting your own hay. And... It says this grass is ready to harvest, but it sure doesn't look like it is to me. Huh. That's odd. Well, it should look like this. I wonder why it doesn't. Okay, well, whatever. That's a little bit weird, man. Not sure. Anyway, um, so here's the thing. You can harvest your own hay up to five times a year. Um, and so there's really two stages that you can harvest the hay and there's the, the first harvestable stage, which is what this is. But if you let it go another month, then it grows up a little more, turns a little yellower and starts to show some seeds. And, um, you get a little more yield when you wait that time, but it takes, you know, it takes waiting longer for it to get to that stage. So... I watched somebody, you know, kind of demonstrate that and do a little bit of a um, a, a test on that. And basically what it boiled down to is that if you wait until the grass gets to that second stage, you'll only get three harvests out of the year and you won't make as much yield as if you harvest it as soon as it comes up to the first stage because you can do it five times. But then what he did was he split it up and he did the hay... The first cutting he did on the first uh, stage like this, and then he waited for the second and third cuttings for it to be on the second stage, and then he did the last one once again on the first stage. So he did it for a total of four times out of the year instead of five and ended up with about the same yield. Um, so what that basically means is that if we follow that same, um, you know, if we follow that same method, then... We only have to har harvest our hay four times a year, but we'll still get the same yield as if we just did it five times a year with the first thing. So I'm, you know, hopefully that made sense to you guys. What it boils down to is we, we don't have to do the fifth harvest, which saves all, all of the work and effort, but we still get the same amount of yield from it. Okay. So anyway, if you're interested, let me know in the comments and I can uh, link that, that actual video that I, uh, to you that I watched. So, yeah, so we're going to do our hay. We're going to do fertilizer contracts. There's nothing to buy. I think we're in pretty good shape in terms of, let's check our chickens. So, yeah, we're pretty good on chicken food. I'm hoping this will last until July. So, you know, because we're going to, we're planning on buy, buying that barley field. And then, you know, we'll, then we'll have plenty of feed for them for the rest of the year. And then maybe, maybe then some even. 
Um, so, but if not, you know, if we have to buy some feed for a month or two, it's not the end of the world either. And then in terms of our greenhouses, uh, we're doing good on water and fertilizer. The fertilizer is starting to get down, but we should be good for at least another month, maybe even two before we have to uh, deal with that. Okay, so um, uh, let's go ahead and get the fertilizing contracts knocked out first. And then we'll come back and get started on our hay.
guys, let's take a look and see how we did here on these fertilizing contracts. Um, what are we looking at? We're looking at this. No, we're not looking at that. We're looking at this. Okay, so we made $43,340 off of that fertilizer contract, but we have to subtract uh, $14,560 for all the fertilizer we had to buy. So that means, excuse me, that we... Uh, profited twenty eight thousand four hundred and fifteen bucks, so that's pretty doggone good. Um, and yeah, okay, so that's where we're at. So we're sitting at one hundred seventy five thousand dollars. We almost have enough money now to to purchase our barley field that we're going to be buying here pretty soon. Um, but remember, you know, we have. Uh, next month, April 1st, we're going to have all the haying contracts, and that's going to bring us in probably six figures uh, just by itself. Well, and cultivating any, anything else that we end up doing. Okay, so our tractor needs a little bit of TLC, so we'll repair that for $33.25. And um, got that done. And let's also just hose it down a little bit here so it stays nice and clean. I don't know. I don't know how many farmers in real life go to this much effort to keep their tractors this clean all the time. <laughs> Based upon what I've seen in my lifetime, probably not a whole lot. But hey, we can do it. Let's do it. And we always have a nice, shiny, clean tractor when we start new jobs. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, my friends. I think we're going to wrap up this episode here. So... We'll probably start the next episode with, did we look at the sales? I think we did, right? <clears throat> oh, this, okay. You know, we did look at the sales, but I, but then I needed, uh, then I closed, I saved the game and closed it down in, in real life because I had to go do something and I came back later and now this has come up. All right. So. So this is a bale collector. Oh, but it can only do up to 120 centimeter bales. Oh, well, okay, that rules that out already. Because we're going to, you know, we want to make the big bales. Um, 200, I think they're the 240 centimeter bales. Um, plus, I don't know how many bales this. Oh, it can hold 14 bales. Wow. All right, so this is like a less expensive version of, you know, the the bigger, the Harrow bed type of pickup trailer. But unfortunately, it's too small. You know, uh, we're not going to be making the small bales. We're going to be making the big bales. So, all right, well, interesting, though. Definitely interesting, but that's not going not gonna to cut the mustard for us, I think. All right, well, anyway... Uh, what were we saying? I was saying, yeah. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna start, you know, doing the hay, doing our hay. And what I might do is just start the next episode with uh, just kind of a, a quick time lapse summary of that. Because, I mean, you guys have seen me do it so many times now. Um, and then, you know, then we'll get into um, that next episode. So, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Now, what we are going to do, though, I'll, I'll do this before I let you go. Uh, as usual, we're going to lease the our, our favorite mower here. I'm hoping someday this thing comes on sale, man. It does. If, if it does, we're buying it no matter what. Even if we have zero dollars, we're going to take a loan out in the bank and buy this thing. But for now, uh, we're unfortunately going to have to lease it. So that means thirty-eight hundred bucks. But we can certainly afford to do that, uh, no problem at all. One thing I would consider maybe doing is also i mean we have the square baler now so what we could do is man it's too bad this doesn't work with the larger bales man there's a couple things we could do uh i could purchase that square bale loader that we, you know, that I used in the last, was it the last episode? Whenever that was. Because I want that thing anyways. 
And that was actually in, whoops, uh, in front loader tools. So let's see, that would be here. It was this bale loader right here. Bale King. And by the way, as I often do, unfortunately, I if you guys noticed I wasn't using the clamps on this, it's because I forgot to hook the lines up like a noob. But you know what? This is not that expensive. We're just we're gonna buy it anyway. Let's just do it. Okay, it's done. No more hemming and hawing about it. It's a done deal. So we could actually use this to pick up the bales in our own fields. And we could probably, I, I'm, it can handle like a stack of four. If we're going to do that, though, um, <clears throat> so let me think. So we mow the grass. We use our square bale to bale it. We're going to need a wrapper. And so we're going to need this wrapper here because they're going to be square bales. And we're going to have to lease this for now. I don't want to, I'll eventually get this. But, you know, uh, again, like I said, our highest priority right now is getting that barley field. And, and uh, so I don't want to spend a lot of money until we, ha until we are the owner of that field. So we're just going to lease this. But, you know, the leasing costs of the mower and that and purchasing that pickup is not that expensive. So I think we'll be good. Oh, wait a minute, though. I just, something just occurred to me. Crap. I mean, we we can't really wrap those bales and then puncture them. I mean, we can. The game doesn't care. It'll let us do it. But in real life, you wouldn't do that. All right. So is there any solution for picking up bales, square bales, that doesn't involve puncturing them if they're wrapped? That's Probably this thing here. So this will handle the big bales. Only does three at a time. But it'll pick them up and stack them. Yeah, I didn't, doggone it, I didn't consider that. We can't puncture those bales. I, I mean, I'm not going to do that because it's not realistic is what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> So I guess we're, you know, we're, we committed ourselves to doing square bales. So we're going to have to lease this too. I mean, that's not a ton of money. We'll, we'll be okay. We'll make it happen. Uh, but I should have paid more attention to that, but I didn't. So there you go. All right. Well then, uh, yeah, we got all the equipment we need to make this happen. We are going to do square bales now. I'm, I haven't decided for sure. Let's look at something here. If we go into here and we look at leasing costs. Okay. So we just spent $8,400 leasing all that stuff. I'm just trying to decide if I want to just start doing that from now on and not do the round bales. The advantage is fewer bales to have to handle in the long run. I mean, it took me... I know if you guys watched the last episode and I did the time lapse of loading up all these round bales to go sell them in January, I mean, you know, for you, it was only like four or five minutes. That took me an hour and 15 minutes to do all of that in real life. So I'm wondering if we, if we should just sell this and just do square bales moving forward. Uh, you know, from now on, if we did sell this, how much can we get for it? Um, let's go. Uh, oh, it does. It doesn't let me select it. What? Can I demolish it? Oh, no. I can't get rid of this, you guys. What the heck? Oh no, that sucks. There, it's not letting me get rid of it. All right. Um, dang. I 
I don't suppose if I tried to... I probably couldn't landscape it out of there, could I? I'll tell you what, let's try something here. That's a mod. That's not a base game item, so there's that needs to be fixed. Because you should always be able to sell or remove anything you put down on your property. Um, okay, so I saved the game. If this doesn't work, is there any chance I can just simply landscape over this? So let's go to painting and gravel. And then um, increase the size of this. Nope, doesn't let me do it. What if we... Oh, okay, that gets rid of it. Well, it got rid of some of it anyway. Oh, no, it didn't. It just... No, that didn't work. That just put it... <laughs> I just buried it. Is it still there? Yeah, it's still there. All right, let me... If this doesn't work, I'm just going to reload the game, but... If I can separate it, completely separate it from the terrain. I don't know. I don't think this is going to do anything at all, but. Okay. And then if we go back to buildings, yeah, I can't select it. Or demolish it. All right. Well, that that's I consider that a bug. This is a broken mod. So if you guys, if you guys ever decide to use this, um, just be aware you can't remove it once you put it in place. That's that's too bad. That is really too bad. Okay. Well, here let's reload the game. Okay. Well, I mean we we're just gonna have to leave it there and work around that, I guess, if we're not, you know, if we're not doing round bales anymore. It's always been my intention to eventually switch to square bales anyhow. So I guess it's really just a matter of, do we want to spend $8,400 leasing every time we do our hay until we can, you know, obtain more of that equipment versus um, doing the round bales, but having to handle them so much more and make so many more trips, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know, we're, we're, we have to do it this time regardless because I kind of committed myself. And uh, again, it sucks that we can't, we can't get rid of this, but we can always, we can still stack hay over here, you know. In fact, you know what would be nice to have is an, is an actual, another shed dedicated to hay. That shed, I think, is only 10 grand. Uh, but you know what? I bet you it wouldn't let us put it in here because this is in the way. Let's just... Just out of curiosity, um, let's go to uh, building silos, farmhouse of Shets. And we're looking for the $10,000. <clears> yeah, see, it says it overlaps with, well, part of the problem is I myself am in the way. Let's move over here. Okay, so we got grab the $10,000 shed here. Uh, ooh, wow, that thing's enormous. This would actually be better for a hay shed. In fact, that's what it is, is a hay shed. But the problem is we can't put it there because that stupid thing's in the way. That is, that's really too bad, man. That is really too bad. The nice thing about this shed is it's taller than this other one, so we could probably get the harrow bed in there, you know, and stack up the hay. But, yeah. Okay, well. The thing is, is we're making silage, right? And it's wrapped, so the silage really does not need to be undercover. So I guess what we're going to have to do for now is we're just going to have to stack the silage out here and just work around this as best we can. I don't know what else to do. But yeah, again, that's too bad that that doggone thing doesn't work right. 
Anyhow, guys, um, so yeah, we will start the next episode with some time lapse of working the hay. And uh, then we'll go over there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share out the video. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Goodbye.